Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Christian Karasevich. I'm the founder of Social Chefs, and this is the uh, Social Chatter Blab. It's a show that um, my co-host and I, Mr. Vincent Orlick over here, that we put on every single week where we talk about what is new, what's hot in social media, uh, you know, as I said, for the week. You can uh, tweet us at C-K-R-O-K-S um, or also at Social Chefs. And also, Mr. Vincent, uh, what is it? At uh, is it Vincent Orlick? Yeah, just my name at yeah. Vincent Orlick. And don't forget to use hashtag social chatter as well and hashtag blab if you all want to do that. Um, so we've got some really good topics to cover today. You know, honestly, we're going to focus a lot on Twitter and Facebook, uh, mainly because uh, that's really where kind of the, the change is going to happen this week. Um, if you want to jump in, you know, and add anything, uh, Vincent, feel free to. Um, you know, this is a pretty open show. So, um, so let's get started. So um, topic number one for the week, this is, uh, this is actually on Twitter. Um, they have ch- they made a couple of changes this week. Two of them have to do with photos. So the first item is previously when you would upload a photo to Twitter, if you were using the native size, 1024 by 512, you would get a nice rectangle. Well, if you uploaded something that was outside of that, say it was a square, you would get a funny crop. And so, you know, this could actually drive designers nuts because they're trying to design things that are, you know, thanks for sharing that, by the way. Oh, no, I was different. I was putting up a GIF. Didn't work. Okay. Didn't work. Sorry, so I'm going to put topic one, Twitter. Oh, here we go. Here's the GIF. Um, Very cool. So topic number one, Twitter photo changes. Um, Personally, I, I'm actually glad to see Twitter made this change. I think it's going to be interesting, though, because, you know, as you add more stuff to the Twitter news feed, the Twitter stream, you are going to essentially lengthen the amount of scrolling you're going to have to do to get to anything. Um, what is your take on this, by the way? You know, I, I think it's great if you're doing yeah. Vine or those kinds of things, but what would take? Uh, it's, it's another one of those that seems to be uh... – Number one, they've been making a ton of changes since uh, Jack Dorsey took over, right? Um, this seems to fall in that in that line of uh, the kind of smaller things that are indicative of more of the whole overall platform approach. Um, Claire said it's not a Claire. You know what? When I was looking on the app, I you know I was thinking about that today, and it, it, I see it on the app. I maybe it's maybe there was an update today, um, but I I could have sworn I oh no you're right no you're right well you may have to well, you may have to log out of the Twitter app and log back in possibly no it's there it's it's there so so look because because I'm on this right and it doesn't it may not look it but look at when I make the photo bigger it's it's that photo you know people are still sizing their photos I think too to the Twitter sizes yeah. and maybe they haven't heard about this. Um, but all, when I click on all the photos, they still stay that same dimension. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's kind of. So if I do look, it's the same. It's not like it's not like it's only cutting off or it's cutting off some of it. Right. Um, the whole thing is there. So it looks like it's working. Yeah, I mean, you may have to log out if you aren't seeing it yet. I mean, I didn't see. I don't think they actually mentioned if it was going to be desktop or mobile at the moment. Um, it's on. It's on desktop. I mean, it's definitely on yeah. desktop. Right. Um, um, well, here's the here's the update. Sure. There's the update. Oh yeah. Did we just get it? I just I'm updating right now, Very so cool. we'll see. Because it says improved user experience. Okay. Yeah. I mean, plus it, one password integration. It's also one of those things I think that they were also talking about how they're going to roll it out to everybody, and you know it doesn't always hit every account. I think, but I would log right. out and log back in see if it fixes it. Um, so that's that's item number one. What what are your uh, you know what are your thoughts? Do you think this is a good thing? I mean, it's a small. Thing. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I it's it's improved user experience. Like they're saying, you know, it's when you're going through your feed, um, you see the whole picture. It looks like like I, that's what I'm saying. It's like right now, I it looks like I'm seeing the whole picture. Mm-hmm. So so I think they may have just may have just done this. Um, yeah, I, anything that improves the user experience with Twitter is always going to be good. With any platform, it's always going to be good. But but even something as small as that mm-hmm. is is still kind of a big deal. Right. Um, mm-hmm. It's when you're going through your feed, that's what they want. Is they want it to be easy for you to go through your feed and see see what you want to see. Um, 
you know, it's, it's, it makes it easier on brand managers and people that tweet a lot of photos because they don't have to do the image, the dimensions anymore, right. really. I mean, you still need to kind of do them, I think, because, you know, like, for instance, if you're taking a like, photo with an iPhone, for instance, in most cases, you should be taking it in uh, landscape mode, which is going to produce, you know, a, a rectangular sized photo, um, which, you know, again, they're going to up. So basically, the bottom line is they're going to upload them at the size they're doing. I'm actually wondering this. I'm actually, you know, I love the little incremental change they're doing. I think that's a good thing. Um, it's a lot less that people that are on Twitter have to think about because, you know, they said it was hard to use. Uh, the other thing I think that it could maybe be uh, foreshadowing is that, you know, you've got Vine. I don't think a lot of people are using Vine as much. Um, I think there's a-, a different demographic. I mean, it's definitely a younger crowd. As much as people say Snapchat is a young crowd, Vine is probably even younger. Well, so so what I think they're going to do with this maybe is I think you might see better Vine integration, you know, maybe, you know, moving towards that point. So better Vine integration. And I think maybe yeah, that's a good point. Periscope tie-in. You know, Periscope also, by the way, that was, I guess that was news this week. Periscope got named uh, app of the year by uh, Apple. Over yeah, in the 19. app store. Yeah. It, so the, the thing with Periscope is it's, yeah, they'd have to do something because, and you know, the thing that surprises me is when with, with Periscope, is it still not showing like a, a screenshot or an image mm -hmm. or it, it kind of does like it's cut off. Right. It's cut off. So, so yeah, I mean, maybe this is along those lines. And with Vine, Vine, you're right. Vine doesn't have um, the Twitter dimensions. Vine is a, is a square. Mm -hmm. So and, for that I to mean, show up, like, right. Yeah. Maybe they're going to do that. You know, again, who knows, but I oh, think makes it's sense. a nice step. By the way, I also forgot to mention in addition, so they're not going to like crop your photos when you upload them, which is great. They're also going to be changing up um, how you do when you upload multiple photos. Like if you upload, for instance, a collage, instead it was like a rectangle and then each uh, photo got the same dimensions. Um, what they're also going to be doing with that is they're going to take one image and make it a big image and then three of the photos along the side. Yeah. So yeah. That's actually nice because, you know, when you upload, again, when you upload a photo this way, I think that it, um, you know, if you upload it and they're all little small rectangles, it's definitely going to cut off a lot of the photo. So I think this is a, I think that's a good change as well um, for the week. So I'm over here going to check. Yeah, taking a page from Facebook where when you upload an album on, on yeah. Facebook, let's say it'll show the one big photo with mm -hmm. three or so smaller photos. If you're doing at least four, four photos like that. Yeah. And I put, I think I put a link to that in the chat window. So, so that's uh topic number one. Anybody have anything they want to say about that topic? Uh, by the way, Claire, thank you very much for sharing this. Yeah, everyone that's in here, feel free to to tell a little bird, hit that little tell a little bird button, and uh, and tweet it out if you if you would would please, and let uh let's let your networks know we're we're talking about social media. Let's see what else um, other people have to say. Uh, there's there's a lot going on this week for sure. So um so topic number two. By the way, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna stick to yeah. Twitter, but we're moving to topic number two. This topic is pretty big. Actually, I'm glad they're doing this. You know, I, I don't think it's going to be very obtrusive. So Twitter is going to start advertising. For instance, if you're not logged into Twitter, you're going to be able to I believe see the news feed, the Twitter stream, sorry. And they're going to have ads show up as well. Um, that way they can start to make some money off of it. What do you, uh, do you think we're on ad overload? What are, you, what are your thoughts here? Well, no, it's, it's look, it's for Twitter. They have to do this. Um, you need they, a gated, in a way you need gated assets essentially. They well they yeah, they gotta get rid of the gated assets. It has to well, be so that the people um that are not on Twitter right. they can advertise to because they need to uh grow that segment to the I mean that's the whole thing is is the, mm -hmm. the revenue stream is they, they have to grow the ways that they're gonna get revenue. If if they can't grow the user base, which I'm sure they're working on also different ways. Right. Um mm -hmm. I don't know that this necessarily helps to grow the user base because they've always kind of claimed that well we have 300 million people on twitter but there's so many other people that maybe see tweets and look at mm -hmm. twitter um that don't have an account or or they don't log in which mm -hmm. i don't really get <laughs> but i i understand i get why people wouldn't log in but i i just i don't get the point of that uh, I know people are afraid of stuff like that, but um, it's, it, they had to do it. They, they had, you had, they had to find a, a different way to, to 
show ads to to people that were not logged in on the platform if mm-hmm. they're not going to grow the user base immediately and that's that's a good way to do it so basically if you do a it it, it kind of partners with the search on Google if you if you search on Google for for something and a tweet mm-hmm. comes up as a result which should be at the top yep yep um you click on it now uh-huh. along with the tweet you'll see potentially uh and an ad somewhere in there so it yeah i think for twitter it's great for advertisers i mean i don't run twitter ads the 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 brand that i manage we don't do twitter ads um i don't know how how viable they are now does this make the case to make them more viable for sure for sure uh, it's definitely worth going to be worth testing i by the way I, i'm i'm going to I'm going to chime in here and I don't know if you want to look at, uh, look at our questions here. I think we got Craig yeah. asking a question, but so I actually think I would love to see it where if I could go to Twitter, if I was not logged in, I'd love to be able to see the conversations, but for instance, like maybe they don't allow me to engage or something like that. You know, when I'm not logged in, like throw, you know, show me ads. Maybe you don't allow me to do any sort of engagement with the person, um, you know, to kind of see maybe, you know, some sort of time, I guess, I guess that kind of is already kind of there if you're not logged in, but, something to kind of block me essentially um, to get me to come into the site. Basically, you know, it's almost like, you know, if you're going into a store, you know, you can window shop versus you can come in the store, you know, and actually see what else, you know, they have to offer. So I'd love to see something like that. But um, I agree with Craig that the ads are driving more traffic to their site is not the answer. I mean, that's for sure. That's true. Um, It's the answer in the set for them in the sense of being beholden to um, people that the stockholders, Right. and the board and all that like i mean as a way to drive to potentially drive further revenue it's mm-hmm. it's an answer um but it's not the answer for sure they there i think the i think periscope has to be a and even vine to some extent but really periscope has to be a, a big factor in in growing the user base i really honestly i think that they need to combine both those tools dump them into twitter and i mean yes you know essentially you're going to have almost like a, a Facebook like clone. But if you think about it, Twitter has had Vine and Periscope for a pretty long time. You know, uh, Periscope, maybe not so much, but you know, they're, they're very popular tools. You know, they're tools that Facebook didn't have, you know, Facebook didn't have, um, you know, what live, live uh, mentions and whatnot, you know, live video, like that's new. So, you know, they have the tools. It's like, all you need to do is just start integrating them into your existing product. And I think that they'll start to get more people to go there. Um, I think at some point, you know, you're still going to have to, I think they're still going to have to get, you know, very, you know, to be very similar to Facebook and how people log in, go there and check it every day. Cause right now there's a lot of lurkers, you know, you can go there, you can look at things you don't have to, you know, you don't have to do anything. There's too, so, there is a lot of noise. There's too much noise. There's too much. Yeah. Um, they, I think they need to focus more on those niches on, on the, the various niches that exist within Twitter in this kind of in the same sense that Facebook has has grown it, mm-hmm. the groups function has grown immensely as we've talked about a bunch of times like so many yeah. people are using gr- this year especially i don't know whether it's because of the app for groups now or what but but groups are huge on facebook now and twitter doesn't the, the close thing to, to to groups on on twitter is a group dm mm-hmm. you know right. and I mean, some people aren't going to just aren't going to use that. And so I don't know if there's a way that they can maybe integrate that sort of functionality into it where you can go on Twitter and and just be part of a specific segmented group that you choose or I'm sure there's a way they could do it. And I don't know if that's the answer, but I mean, more options would be good and a way to cut through all the noise aside from lists and and DMs um, Mm -hmm. would. Right. Lists, for instance, I think are like... uh, a good way to sub, uh, you know, to, um, to segment things, but they're just kind of convoluted to use. It's like you add somebody to a list and you still have to scroll within that list. You know, if you have somebody right. with tons of tweets, it's just like, it's useless because you could put one person on there that consumes, you know, 60% of the tweets oh, or whatever. Yeah. All I do is see their tweets. Unless you're really, unless like your main focus is, okay, I'm going to use lists to do mm-hmm. all that. And this list is going to have like the 10 people I work with in it and then this list is going to have the five people I, that are my fantasy f- football friends mm-hmm. this list you know and then you're just going to use lists and that's it mm-hmm. um right. which i don't i don't know if that's really feasible 
Claire, mm -hmm. Claire just said the only Twitter accounts I see using Vine are some of the major publishers. The thing is, Claire, that I so how much time do you spend on Vine? I don't spend I, I used to spend more time on Vine, but I, I don't think it's us. Right? I mean, I don't think it's Christian. I don't think it's me. I don't think it's you. I think it's I don't think it's Craig. I don't think it's it's the people in this room. I think it's and I know, I mean, I know that there's a younger crowd on there for sure. Um but that's that's who's in there. I can tell you my my 15 year old, she's in Vine constantly. She's not posting videos, but she's in there. She's watching videos all the time. And on Facebook, she follows the Vine Facebook pages that show the best vines. Mm -hmm. So like that, the teenagers, as much as Snapchat, like we said, is 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 like the, the younger generation. Um, Vine is even younger and there's I don't know how much it's still the case, but there was that whole segment of um, Vine stars becoming Vine famous of just those those kids, the teenagers, the comedians that are super, super popular on Vine. They go to malls, get paid mm -hmm. to do appearances and this whole crazy subculture. But none of us know anything about it. You know, it's, it's just like it's just under there and because it's for the kids. It's, it's the super young kids that are that are into it. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see kind of how this, you know, plays out. I mean, I think I think the ads, I, I think these three changes that Twitter's making this week, I think those are a very good yeah. step in the right direction. You know, it's not going to fix everything overnight. I know that. Uh, but I think it's a really good change. Um, you know, we'll kind of see how this plays out in the next uh, you know, next few months. I, I suspect that we're going to get a lot more, you know, we're going to hear a lot more from Twitter. So um, with that, I'm going to move on to the next topic, unless anybody has anything else they want to add. What's next? Okay, so um, let's talk about Facebook aiming services at work. Facebook at work. This has been uh, talked about by Facebook even for a while, a while, several months. Yeah, it's not. It's interesting because it's not something that. Like it came out, and you know, I guess it was being tested, and then now I guess they're finally up to you know. There's a few companies out. that have had it that have, have been the guinea pigs for it, uh, but now they're gonna what at the start of next year they're gonna kind of start rolling it out in waves. Yeah, the I just said ninety five percent. Yeah, so I so I think on this, I mean, I wanted you know one, I wanted to update everybody that hey, this is actually gonna be rolling out very soon now. But I think the key thing is I want to ask the question: Is this still relevant? You know, I. I know there are a lot of companies that block, you know, social media, you know, access to social media channels, or at least, you know, it was a few years ago. Um, I know that they've kind of had oh, a sure. back because, hey, um, we need our employees on social media. I mean, you want your employees on social media channels. You know, do you think that Facebook at work is a good solution? I mean, I, I think it's going to, I think it's their next really huge, they're looking at it as their next huge potential um business like mm -hmm. this i think in their minds they're looking at it like this is gonna this is gonna double our revenue <laughs> this is gonna add so much because when you think about it you know maybe not right away but as more companies start to use it are they gonna allow advertising into it so now advertisers can reach specific employees at specific companies mm -hmm. um target that way you know I, I don't know i don't know if you know definitely not in the beginning i can't see that because i can't see that as being something that um when they're pitching it to businesses sure. uh, to use that that would be a, a positive feature for the business to look yeah. at that'd be um, funny if, you know you're <laughs> looking at your company one and all of a sudden you're getting a competitor pop up and you're putting money in the uh competitor's company <laughs> <laughs> right but but I mean eventually who knows who knows maybe there will be a way around getting competitors in there maybe it would only be certain types of businesses or whatever but I mean that could be an, another revenue stream but certainly this they're gonna charge for it it's not gonna be free it's gonna right. be you know these enterprise level companies down to you know even small businesses that could potentially use it I the I think the main thing is the privacy which mm -hmm. they're they've already addressed that it's a separate total separate account that you would have a separate work profile and mm -hmm. the the platform itself would be separate from you know main facebook let's say and if they can penetrate the workplace and compete mm -hmm. with the slacks of the world 
and um, you know, Basecamp and Asana, um, the any of those collaborative tools that you know, Slack is huge, right? Is the hot thing right now and huge. Uh, but they, mm-hmm. those Jive, th- there's been those collaborative platforms for the workplace that have existed for a number of years, and they're big business, big business. So for me, the times that I've I've been in a company where that type of collaborative platform and tool has been implemented the main obstacle really has been like getting familiar with it with how to use it and so if facebook can come out with facebook for work i mean everybody knows how to use facebook at this Mm -hmm. point i mean huge percentage of the population so if they can say hey you know you can be up and running on this so quick and you, your employees already love facebook and um, this is just tailored for you and, and the company can control the content mm-hmm. i mean it seems like a natural that's why i, I would be bullish on it like if if i i already brought it up actually for my company i was like if this comes out we can get it we should at least yep. check it out but so- I, I would be bullish on it for sure this is so in your line of work i think that it could be a very useful tool not just for your employees but you know i guess and you could probably answer maybe you could speak of this a little bit um are your employees well sorry are your independent distributors yeah i know they're not necessarily employees but here's how i could see facebook at work being very useful if i could log into facebook like you know of course you're controlling the keys basically to the social channels but if i'm you know an employee most of the time i'm not checking the company stuff you know i don't really know what's going on and that's where I see there's a ton of value with this because if I can log in and I can see everything the company's got going on and all their umpteen Facebook pages they create for all their brands and whatnot, I think there's a lot of value there. It helps actually break down the communication barrier and saying, well, oh, I didn't read that email you know, or yep. whatnot, or hey, I didn't see that tweet that you sent. Um, now, I would ask the question, in your case, would your independent distributors be people that you would want to have I mean, I could see them. I think that would actually be a great tool for them to be able to log into Facebook at work per se yeah. and see all the stuff that the company has going on. That is obviously just stuff that you want them to see because you want them to market the product and whatnot. Um, but what, what's your, uh, you know, what's your take on that? Yeah, I, I mean, for, for a network marketing type of a company, and to be honest, until you just said that, I wasn't even really thinking about it for them. I was thinking about mm-hmm. it for our 250 actual corporate employees. Right. But mm-hmm. in that case, I mean, I, I, no, we definitely, there's definitely stuff that, I mean, in any company that right. is only meant for internal use, right. for whatever reason, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I don't think that that would necessarily be the primary use, but from what I was looking at, it looks like there's some sort of, there's groups mm-hmm. available in Facebook for work too. So right. that could be, we already use groups. We, mm-hmm. we use Facebook groups um, for several different types of of groups um of the the distributors the reps right um yeah so and i communicate with them there's there's people from corporate in there um mm-hmm. in the various ones so we already use it so i i would absolutely see us creating like a, a group now what the access is if it's mm-hmm. if it's someone that's not officially a corporate employee right how that would work i don't know obviously but but certainly you know, if that could be done, then yeah. But I, I was even thinking more just like for the internal, like the 250 or so corporate employees that that, that would certainly be beneficial to our communication process. Absolutely. No, I, I think that, I think there needs to be some sort of, you know, it, there needs to be like a side obviously for corporate employees and there needs to be a side for, you know, independent distributors. I'm sure this is probably being rolled out mainly to, hey, you know, it's a very large company. They want to keep all their employees off Facebook. They probably haven't thought as far as, you know, as we're talking about here, you know, having something for independent distributors or whatnot within a specific niche, because most of the time it's, you know, just you're an employee. They want you to, you know, know what's going on in the company. Yeah. Uh, they don't really kind of go outside that because they expect those people to follow that. But I think that this is something that could be very useful for them because most independent distributors uh, within network marketing companies, I mean, they're strapped for time. You know, they're people that, you know, there may not be as tech savvy. You know, and yep. so they aren't up on all the best practices and whatnot of how they can stay in touch with all of this. You know, they feel very overwhelmed, probably. So um, I'm looking forward to this. You know, I, you know, for me, I mean, I'll try it out. But I think, you know, it's going to be um, I think it's, a, you know, I think it'll be a good tool coming out because I think it'll give 
people who are, you know, they don't want to give people access to their personal Facebook profile. Right. This is a great way for, you know, for employees to kind of, in a way say, okay, I don't feel like, I don't feel violated, you know? Um, I don't think it's any different than, than right. having one of the, the current platforms. It's just sure. that it was, it's Facebook's version and it's, it's more, um, like it's more accessible to people because they already know how to use Facebook and the functionality is probably going to be somewhat similar, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, for a company that already uses something like, like a jive or a sauna or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it's getting the switch over might be a little bit more difficult because they're probably already pretty embedded with that other mm -hmm. one. Um, and a lot of stuff is on there. <laughs> uh, yeah. but, but certainly I, I think that the, the market, already exists like the, the companies already see the value in in having that type of internal platform so it's just a matter of which one do they want which one works best for them and mm -hmm. if if the facebook at work one is is an option i mean they're going to get business and there's mm -hmm. people that are going to use it for sure yeah no definitely i'm i'm excited about it. i think uh you know i think we're going to see some big things from facebook in 2016 actually yeah so what's up q uh, by the way, we're going to stick with, uh, you know, another Facebook marketing topic. This one is actually tied to Facebook pages. Uh, Facebook has, I don't know if you've seen this, I've been testing out some of this. They basically have been revamping how you communicate with Facebook pages. They've got a couple of things going on. One of those is they're trying to show how quickly people respond to like messages on their page. So in a way, it's like you get a little badge and whatnot if you respond. But only if you only if you if you respond quickly. If you don't, it doesn't it doesn't show like they don't respond quickly. <laughs> you right. know, it's just not the badge, only the good, only the really really good. Thanks for mentioning that, by the way. But so that's one item that I think I think that's a pretty you know a good change. I think that you know in a way it forces businesses that are on Facebook to have to you know. Um, to want to actually kind of keep that up, you know, like I know that, you know, it doesn't really say like, Oh, Hey, like to the, you know, the fan or whatnot, like, Hey, this company is really slow or they don't ever respond. But um, I think that it's good, you know, to be able to, you know, to have some sort of way to identify that um, in a way to give you a badge if you do it really well. Yeah. Um, the other thing though, they're starting to change up is the inbox. And this is actually pretty fascinating. So one, they're starting to come out with some things such as um, the ability to have like canned messages and whatnot. So, you know, if I think we've talked about this before, but yeah. if you have, I, I've used them. I've used them. Yeah, they're very, they're very, very helpful. I personally, yeah. I use Text Expander for things like that because you know I basically just you know create my um, my pre-create my message for certain things, and I can fill in fields and whatnot, and it you know puts all that stuff there. But it is nice to have this in Facebook. Um, it is nice also to be able to have a nice little away feature. Yeah, uh, which is pretty cool. So you know, if you're traveling or whatever, then you know you don't get bombarded with a bunch of messages. Um, almost like an out of office type thing. Which yeah, is like cool. an email, like an, like your inbox. That's how it should be. It should be like your your inbox for email. And it is nice though that you know this is actually probably the coolest feature I think is that you can go in and you can tag individuals. You can view their profile within a message. You can also then go in and add notes about that person and so forth. And I I think for me that is a really good addition uh, for Facebook pages because I think it's going to encourage businesses. Hopefully, you know, hopefully they're doing this to take you know to keep an open mind about the people that they are connecting with and instead of just saying it's you know let me answer your message uh i think it's going to actually help them learn more about their customers and what interests them yeah i agree so i, I agree I, mean, I was uh i was looking for the right the right gif to uh <laughs> to respond to to claire with because i think that that's a good point about it's, it will encourage <laughs> pages and, and companies to respond quicker. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah I, so here's the interesting thing, because I, I noticed that um, on a page. So I have, I have the Facebook business manager in addition to just mm -hmm. regular, you know, the Facebook. I have pages in both. And yeah. on regular Facebook, if I went to the, the one of the pages that I manage, mm -hmm. on regular Facebook, that comes up like that with the, the new whole inbox, but on the business manager, it didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which was interesting. I don't know if I just have to log out, log back in. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm hoping it's in the business manager because that's the whole point of it. It's for us. It's for people who, may, who admin pages. 
Yeah, and I know business managers usually been a tool that I want to. I mean, they've sort of been a little bit behind the curve as far as how things work. Um, sometimes you know some features work really well, some don't work so well. Yeah, but they're not going away from it. I mean, they're no. they're that's around no, that's it, staying. <laughs> there's some things they got to work out yeah. in it. It it can be very um, difficult to use. I think. Yep. For a lot of people. So. Um, and a lot of people way, are kind of hesitant to hook their pages up through it and just use yes. that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you end up, you could lose access to your profile. Like I actually had somebody um, with this, uh, I think it was last week, and they lost access to their profile. And it's been like this for a long time, they said. And, you know, it really was one of those things that it got, it had to get escalated. It wasn't just like, oh, it's a five minute fix. So um, I, you know, I, I think that business manager will, you know, I think we'll start to see more out of it. Um, I think it's one of those, you know, you put it out there, you see what works, what doesn't on it. And yeah. then, you know, I think we'll start to see some changes. Oh, and it already ties yeah. in with your Instagram. Like you can run Instagram ads mm -hmm. through the manager on Facebook. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're just tying everything in through that for, for admins, for pages. So it's, yeah. yeah not cool. And I, I think at some point, I think, I think you'll start to see all of these apps kind of come together. You know, I, I see we're starting to see pieces of them come together. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this. Well, and does that lead to the next topic with the, the ones that they got rid of? Ha, yes. So actually, is this our last topic for today? I think it is. Um, yes, this is actually our last topic for today. So this one, I'm actually, I'm excited about this one. Um, I really want to, I want to get your take as well. And everyone who is watching with us, um, basically, you know, Facebook has come out with a ton of apps. They come out with, you know, and in some cases, they're really great. Like, it's great to have a separate app for Facebook pages. And by the way, there's a question in the comments if you want to look at that while I'm talking about this. But, you know, Facebook had come out with, you know, they came out with a separate Facebook app. They then had one for Facebook pages, one for managing groups. They came out with one for managing ads. And then they started coming out with all these little small ones, you know, like Slingshot and Room and Rooms and whatnot. So they're finally taking a step back. And I'm actually wondering if they're just listening to the audience but it's basically Facebook app consolidation and they've removed or they're removing quite a number of apps. And, just, you know, I put this link in there cause it wasn't actually, I didn't find it on Facebook's website, but they basically were getting rid of slingshot, which was like a Snapchat competitor riff, which was like, well, a, calling it a Snapchat competitor is a stretch, but yeah, no well. one really, they kind of checked it out. Then everybody kind of left. And so uh, I'll just use Snapchat. It's way better. <laughs> and, and you had rooms. I actually thought yeah. rooms was useful, but the biggest thing with rooms was that, you know, it's tied into Facebook groups. Like you create like subgroups, but I guess when you have a Facebook group, you know, um, or you have the separate groups app, I don't think rooms is useful. The only way I'd see no. it being useful is if we wanted to bring people into like a small, um, you know, into a small segment, you know, or smaller segment, I guess, to discuss some things. But um, I, yeah, so, so that's the, that's the change. Um, that rooms thing was the the, the, yeah. the user experience was pretty crappy. I so what are your uh, what are your thoughts? So do you think like do you think this is good that they are consolidating? That's the first question. And the second one, um, do you think that they need to? Awesome. Uh, are there any other apps they need to remove? And with that, I'm going to go over the questions here. Yeah. Um, by the way, this is my first time seeing that uh, that welcome message. That's pretty cool that Blab yeah. has that now. So Chuck, welcome. I know we said it in there, but thank your first, maybe this is even your first blab that you've checked out. So I don't know, but it's your first day on blab. Welcome. You're welcome. Um, I, you know what those, those apps, like I'm not, I'm not surprised that they didn't do well. I'm a little surprised that Facebook has already bailed on them um, because it, I mean, they're just cutting their losses. And then this, the whole like part of the company, <laughs> the whole part of the company, that's the creative labs that was responsible for creating those things is now gone. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's, it's significant, you know, in that it's, it's kind of showing that they're maybe finally realizing not finally that they're, they're looking at it from a different perspective now. Cause one of the things that they've been, people have been kind of banging on them for the last year or two is, how many apps are you going to come out with Facebook? How many different yep. apps are you going to come out with aside from the main app that we have to download mm -hmm. to, to use and, and all that? I, I had no problem with them coming out with new stuff and um, mm -hmm. it, you don't have to use it. I'm all for like checking stuff out, seeing if it works for you. Um, you know, like the, the, uh, the notify app, that one, mm -hmm. 
I heard some people kind of banging on that one when it first came out a couple weeks ago. And I actually like it. I set it up right away with some different things. It's, it sends me like the news that I selected from those sources. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, someone else is their first day on Blab, James Burr. Welcome. Nice. Thanks for joining our, our Blab. We're talking about uh, Facebook here again. Um, but lots of stuff happening. I, I just, uh, they, they, I don't know if they're going to totally get away from all these app creations and, or if they're not going to go down that road anymore. Mm -hmm. um, if they've kind of determined what's working for them, you know, right. the messenger app, the groups app, um, those are, those are primary. Like I use those all the time. And I know, you know, a lot of people use those all the time. Um, mm -hmm. the new, the new, uh, moments app or not. Mm -hmm. I mean the, mo yeah, the moments app it's, it's, it's got a use. I don't know that I'm going to use it all the time, but it certainly makes things easier for, mm -hmm. for sharing photos with specific people. And it does, I mean, you can do it real quick without having to search for things. And yeah, it's pretty amazing. So um, that being said, it's just, I, I, I think that they're going to maybe shift their focus a little bit on maybe it is going to be on Facebook for work. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe that's, they're going to put kind of a lot of their eggs in that basket because it's mm -hmm. such a, so much potential with that. Um, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, what, what do you think, Christian? Uh, I, I like the fact that I can finally delete a few apps off my phone. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I got the 128 gig, you know, iPhone. I've, you know, upgraded pretty much every time they've come out with higher tiers. You know, I, I like that now I don't have to have so many apps on there. I mean, you know, again, that's all content you're creating, you know, it's typically what's taking up space. But the only thing that kind of it bothers me, I guess, is that while I love the fact that a lot of these companies are testing new apps, and I think they need to experiment. I sort of feel that they need to kind of go into like a private beta mode. Yeah. And not release them because, you know, you get people out there and they, you know, they join and they try the app and they spend time with them. They're like, oh, this, you know, they don't know if it's going to be built on. And that I think is probably the most frustrating part because you don't know when something's going to get shut down that you might have actually found some use in. So uh, that's the only part that kind of bothers me about this. But I like the fact that they're starting to consolidate. Um, I, I, you know, I think that, you know, you really don't need all those separate apps in some cases, you know, yeah. um, you know, I, some of them, you know, like the, the rooms one, like, I thought that was cool, but again, it comes down to how many people are actually going to use it. There's, you know, there's only so much practicality to it. You know, if you came out with like a really awesome app for groups, why do you kind of really need another one? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe if they came out with it and said, well, Hey, here's some ways you could use this. That would probably be helpful. I think the rooms but, one was pretty redundant. It seemed. Well, I, and I think didn't that, I think that came out before the actual official groups app. So it did, you know, yeah. So I don't know what their thought process was there, but um, the rooms thing, I tried it, you know, and and I saw. I remember John Loomer, you mm -hmm. know, Facebook ad uh, expert extraordinaire. He wrote a blog post about it that I remember reading. That was it wasn't like super in favor of it, but it wasn't crushing it either. Right. Um, so it was more of like, hey, let's wait and see, let's try it out. And I, that's where I was on the, on the whole thing mm -hmm. too. Um, but I, I, I used it like the first week and yeah. I was trying to do stuff. And then I, I was gone. I, I haven't, I got two new or a new phone since then. I haven't like redownloaded or anything. So. Yeah. I and mean, there's, just, there's so much that you can, you know, we don't have so much attention span to be able to give to things and, you know, to be able to take that and implement it in your business on the fly. I mean, that does take a little bit of quite a lot of time, you know, to have to kind of, you know, move things around yep yep so, you know i um personally though i i'm glad they're consolidating i really am i'm happy they are um starting to make things um hopefully a little more streamlined definitely Maybe this is like you know the first step of many into you know into making everything just more cohesive so um so with that by the way i think we're out of actually topics for today so i wanted to jump into facebook the tools this is always the best part so this one is actually so the first one um this is actually a free tool well it's normally a paid tool. Um, it's called Afterlight, and it is a photo editing app. It works great for pretty much any kind of photos. Um, you can use it to create photos for Facebook, for Twitter. It's great for Instagram. You know, great for just editing photos on the fly, putting borders. You know, retouching. You know, not doing some of the like you know basic stuff, like yep. really getting into it and you know improving the quality of the you know, the image. But this is a free app. Um, I put this link though in there because it goes to my Facebook page because there are specific instructions 
that you actually have to follow to download this. Pretty straightforward, actually. Um, it's on iOS. You have to go to the Apple Store app. So if you don't have all that, it's all linked in that um, article. And when you go there, they're basically going to let you download it through the app. You don't go to the App Store. If you go to the App Store, you got to pay for it. But that is um, one of my favorite apps, absolute favorite apps for doing any sort of photo editing on yeah. my phone. And I know some, uh, I heard about that, um, heard about that app a little while back, actually. And it was, I, I kind of used it, but I don't, I don't, I'm not going to claim that I use it all the time. I know right. that uh, some of my, my photographer, heavy photographer friends, mm -hmm. like, super heavy into, into photography they 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 yep. use that app they were the ones that recommended it to me originally and it, it was like okay yeah i mean i'll go check it out mm -hmm. yeah i mean and, and so that's how you get it but um i would recommend downloading that you know apple gives away a lot of really nice free apps from time to time and this is actually one of them so you know saves you a buck but enjoy so cool. tool number two this is a tool called kiwi for gmail so anybody who is a Gmail user, you know, a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, a lot actually. So they have two versions of this. They have a uh, free version and a paid version. This is um, actually, I think this was actually on Kickstarter um, a while back. Oh wow! But basically, it's a an it's basically a desktop app for Gmail, and it gives you all the functionality. But it, yet, it's you know, it's built into an app. Um, I try. I've been trying it out. I actually like it. Uh, you know, I've, I'm trying to kind of, in a way, I'm trying to kind of figure out how do I speed up, for instance, Google Chrome or whatnot. And Kiwi, I think, is going to be that way because I don't have to actually keep my browser open and have it constantly connected. Um, they also tie into your notifications on your Mac as well, if you guys are Mac users. Mm. So I would recommend checking that out. Um, very, very, very good tool. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a light version and a paid version. So this is, I haven't used this, and uh, full disclosure, I do not own a Mac, which will be changing pretty shortly. My wife has a Mac. Um, she uses Gmail. So I'm going to ask because I'm going to see if she, she's on Gmail all the time. Like, So someone that uses Gmail on a Mac, they should go get this because mm -hmm. fill in the blank. Uh, they should go get this because it's going to allow you to free up your system resources. And it also ties into your Mac system overall. Okay. So like you get new you know, you can have it where you get pop up, you know, um, Apple has a notification system and it right. can pop up notifications for certain things like when tasks complete, when you get new emails, et cetera. So you can put that in there. In addition to that, though, you can compose straight from this, not just for checking email, you can compose, you get all the functionality. And there's actually some really neat features. Um, you can see, for example, um, how many new messages you've got. You can look at all your unreads. Um, you can also, uh, what else does it have? Um, You've got do not disturb tied into it so you can still have it open but it could still come in and um, they also have some additional uh keyboard shortcuts and all the other stuff um that you can use so so it's worth um, the 10 bucks you're saying oh i think so, definitely i mean I, I think it speeds up the process because imagine this i mean you know what's your typical work process you go you know you keep your email browser open and you're trying to work on something else and you see a new message pop up or whatnot you know this way um by putting it on this app you're able to, you know, you can still get your typical notifications and mm -hmm. go browse through them quickly as opposed to, you know, do I have a new email? If I do, let me, you know, oh, there's five emails. What are they? Like, instead of just going, you know, stopping your interrupt, you know, interrupting your process, your thought process and going to your browser and getting sucked into that, you can get all of this directly from the app. It's cool. So okay. around the way, but yeah. Um, and absolutely, Chuck, yeah, you know, you can still close it. Um, they do have a do not disturb feature, though, which is nice because it does tie into your notifications on your Mac. So that mm -hmm. way you have everything in one place. Um, I actually do that, for instance, when I do these blabs. Um, I put do not disturb on and any notifications are going to pop through. They don't show up. So, um, but, you know, again, different strokes for different folks trying to give, you know, tools and options for everybody um, to kind of help you. <laughs> yeah, do not disturb 24-7. I don't know if that'll get you get you uh, to be super productive, but it's hey, we can all we can all dream, we can all dream. So, tool number three. This is the last tool for the day. Is a tool called Snappa, and this one is okay. So, there's a link to Snappa. So, Snappa is um, anybody who's used Canva or PicMonkey or pretty much any of those tools. Right here. Um, I'm a heavy Canva user. I love Canva. This is very similar to that, except it looks like you get an, 
a fair amount more features with them compared to Canva. You know, you can, um, they've got a lot of layering available. They've got a lot of, uh, it looks like, looks like it's very um, handy actually. You know, it's not, you know, Canva, I can find, I find Canva to be a little bit slow. I, I like it, but I, I feel over time, it just gets really, it bogs down my processor. So I don't know if you noticed yeah, that. But. I mean, to me on mine, it's, I think it's more the, um, the computer I'm using, Yeah. but, but I've heard that like with Canva, um, just because there's so much, there's so much stuff like yeah. in your account and, and how many people use Canva and how many people have all that stuff in their account. So, I mean, I don't know what their server situation is, but <laughs> you know, who knows? I, I, um, I, I actually have Canva for work. We, we have an yeah. account. And that uh -huh. is like, it's, it's super helpful. The camera for mm -hmm. work, not to get too off track because it's a different tool, but camera for work is it allows you to, to put your, your brand assets um, all in one spot and logos and things. So you don't have to kind of search through everything all the time. Um, right. It's if you use Canva a lot, it's totally worth it. If you're self, mm -hmm. uh, you're doing your own self um, right. made graphics and things, it's totally mm -hmm. worth it. Now this one, um, I mean, certainly would have to kind of get in and, and use it. Um, right. I, I don't know. I mean, th there's, this is where there's a lot of money uh, in these, these platforms right now, because mm -hmm. there's so many people, so many companies that are, th th I think that people are starting to realize companies are starting to realize that the person that they bring on as a social media manager or, um, social media, um, specialist, whatever, doesn't necessarily have to be reliant on the graphic design team right within the company you know mm -hmm. that person now more and more not to toot my own horn but i know i do it um you know you can you can make your own graphics and have them look good you know whether yep. it's through word swag or canva mm -hmm. or any of these other tools there's so many tools out there um you can do it and it looks professional it's and you can keep it on brand um so so yeah, it's any any of these types of things. I'm always looking to, to check them out. But honestly, like I, with Canva, I'm kind of embedded with them. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm so devoted right now that and I love their product and they're always kind of improving it. It takes yeah. a lot for me to kind of even go and use something else for any regular amount of time. Yeah, I mean, I again, I mean, there are so many tools out there. I mean, they're available. I I think in your case, like Canva for work, I mean, it fits great if you're. You know, if you're working for a very large company and they have certain requirements that they want for their, you know, the design, they want, you know, certain fonts to be used, certain colors and whatnot, like that's very, very, very useful. But I think also because you have a lot of, you know, a lot of people starting their own, you know, marketing companies and whatnot, um, I think having access to tools like this, you know, this way they don't have to go pay for like a really expensive tool. Like somebody mentioned. Uh, this one, I was just looking at it. I mean, it's, I didn't fun. see this before. It's got buffer integration too, though. Yeah, so, so it, it integrates with but if you use buffer then it allows you to schedule schedule posts that's pretty handy um the there's some other things that are like that too like um pablo and mm -hmm. uh edgar i think has a similar type of a thing where you're where you're in the scheduling tool but allows you to, to do a graphic buffer buffer is integrated with pablo now so that when you're in buffer you can go add or create an image and it'll take you to like a more of a minimal um, capability type of tool for the image for that particular tweet or post or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see actually a lot of these companies are in a way they're kind of like leapfrogging one another because they are, you know, they're coming out with a feature that, you know, for example, um, like you mentioned Buffer, like they had Pablo. Now they're starting to kind of like heavily like embed that into other, you know, parts like if you're for instance have a buffer account and you're like hey i want to create a quick image for something yep it's all tied into your browser for instance if you're on chrome which is awesome but then you know if you look at some of the other tools like you know and then they came out with like a, a social media calendar like i think a couple weeks ago and then now other companies are starting to say well okay like let's take our design thing and oh we should add this type of you know feature such as you know the calendar you know whatnot so i think everybody in a way is converging towards the same um unfortunately everybody's converging towards the same tools you know, and saying like, hey, we're going to, they're trying to best one another, but it's like everybody's tools are all doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say, honestly, so my competition, my, uh, competition is not bad. I don't mind it. I would say, you know, from a, um, from a tools perspective, when you are trying to pick out 
you know, what tools should I use for my business? I mean, there, I would recommend spending a couple minutes trying out some of them. You know, uh, we had somebody mention sketch here a minute ago, the sketch app, and that's a great tool. It's a hundred bucks though. And you know, if you're somebody that, you know, if you're the casual small business owner and you're looking to do, you know, some sort of design, I actually would recommend a different app. I would recommend, um, uh, you guys can check it out over on the app store. It's uh, affinity photo, for instance, you know, and it's more, you know, it's a Photoshop tool. It's, you know, that got, I think app of the year, um, you know, and it, I think it's like 40 bucks. So you may want to, you know, may want to check that out, but I would recommend, you know, spend, a, spend a little bit of money, you know, have a budget for it and give the tools a try. I mean, because they, they all do things a little differently um, and pick the one that really meets your needs. There's nothing to say like, Hey, I can't start out with like, you know, Canva to start or something or Snappa and test those out see if it meets the needs of my business and then upgrade to different models or, you know, or sorry, models upgrade to different um, software packages as I need those features. Most of the time they're pretty inexpensive. So, and yeah, Chuck, yeah, 99 bucks. I mean, it's a, it's a good tool for 99 bucks. I mean, for what it does. So um, I, you know, I, I, I like, uh, I like all the app recommendations by the way we're getting. So uh, with that, let me look through the comments here. Uh, Mike, uh, uh, the $40 one, that is actually um, Affinity Photo. And it's normally, I think, $50. I think it's $40 this week because it's app of the year. Um, kind of neat. You can actually download a trial if you go here. It's all good, Chuck. You're good. By the way, yeah, no worries at all. Not, yeah, there's not rules or anything. There's, there's uh, You just comment. And and then next time, if you if you jump in on a, on our Blab, you can pop in and, and hit that join button and hop in with us yeah, and, and so by the way yeah if you go put a link in there to affinity photo it's 40 bucks uh they have a free trial available as well so you know you may want to go give that a try um that's a really 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 good app um and if you don't like that one uh you know there's obviously as i mentioned there's tons of other ones there but lots of options 40 a yeah. 100 bucks you know so enjoy uh, absolutely. Yeah. Todd, Todd, absolutely. It is very hard to find the time to test all of the apps. There's um, always, yeah. There's, especially when you do a show with um, Christian on a weekly basis and he throws three or four new tools at you uh, every Friday. And <laughs> now I have to find the time and go check them out every, every single time. And I, I try to do it beforehand. And if I can't, then, then I'm learning with the rest of you guys. And he's, he's, in case you guys don't know, Christian is like the king of, of of tools i i would put christian equal equal ground with like uh ian cleary i, I would put you guys like here and here because i've i've seen ian cleary present and he went through like a hundred tools in like a 45 minute presentation <laughs> at social media marketing world and like, christian could do the same exact thing so if you guys are ever looking for tools um check out uh, christian's christian's blog and um social chefs and uh, all that for sure so uh, so chuck um I know you had a question. You were talking about like uh, another tool that Affinity makes for more um, Adobe Illustrator or an Adobe Illustrator clone. Um, were there just a lot of little like things that, you know, that didn't really um, work how you thought they would, or was it missing features? I know they've been updating a lot of the, you know, a lot of the tools and they've been trying to build in um, better functionality for certain things. I'd love to, you know, I'd love to hear more about that. But um, with that, by the way, if, he doesn't have any other questions. Do we have any other questions here? Actually, let's check. Yeah, so I, I suspect they'll come out with workflow features that you know will fix some of those things. Um, you know, I, I think App of the Year will help get them some eyeballs on their con uh, on their tool. Sorry, and you know, probably some more revenue in their pocket. People downloading the app that they can then you know put back into doing some development. So let's. Do you have any other questions? Any other questions here, Vincent? I'm good, man. We we uh we got it in within an hour this week. Yes, we did. And you know, and um, by the way, I just want to tell everybody, you know, I really value you spending, you know, the time, you know, in this case, an hour to join us um, on, you know, on Blab um, and going over some of these tools and some of the social media news for the week. Um, and as I uh, always tell everybody, I try to put a blog post out. Uh, typically, it'll go out tomorrow, uh, covering all of this with links and you know and everything else we kind of talked about, along with the recording of this uh, episode. So, with that, I'm going to put the link to next week's show in there. Let's see if I can get that one for everybody. Yeah, definitely. When, when the link goes up, um, just Here's next week's click show. on it and go and subscribe to it if you want to follow along and get notified 
um, for next so that, week's show. Yeah, that's episode, uh, I think that's what our 16th episode. We do these every week. And then the last part I wanted to mention is if you want to get, you know, as Spencer mentioned about notifying you, you can text social chatter, all capitals to 33444. And that will actually get you on our email list so that every time um, I put together, basically ahead of time, I put together a list of what topics we're going to cover and give you some links and also a link to last week's show. And, you know, this way you can kind of review those ahead of time if you get a, you know, a little bit of time and we can discuss those even further. So Sounds good. with that, I want to thank everyone for joining. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, a pleasure to be able to you know, help you and also to learn from you as well you know, about all the tools that, are, you know, that you're using or some of the challenges. So my name is Christian Karasevich. Uh, this is my partner, Mr. Uh, Vincent Orlek here. And, um, you know, we want to wish you guys a great weekend. So. Bye guys. You. Happy, have a great weekend.